Verse 28. Samson called to the Lord, saying, O Lord God, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray, just this once, O God, that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars which supported the temple, and he braced himself against them, one on his right and the other on his left. Then Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he pushed with all his might, and the temple fell on the Lord's and all the people who were in it. So the dead that he killed at his death were more than he had killed in his life. <laughs> you see, there's so many things here in this, but just for the sake of time, those two middle pillars that he was in between, listen, that was the strength of the enemy territory. That was the strength of the enemy territory. They thought they were safe. They thought they were in, in a good place. But now Samson, listen to me, church. Samson is making some good choices again. He's making some good choices again. Yes, he made some bad choices. I've made some bad choices. We've all made some bad choices. But listen to me, church. Can I tell you something? My granddaddy had to plant corn every year if he wanted it to come up again this year he would have to plant it again this year what i'm saying is this if you quit planting bad choices eventually you're going to get to the end of the crop and thank god for the end of that crop when we make bad choices eventually you're going to outrun that harvest and if you'll begin to sow good seeds begin to make good choices begin to live in god's grace begin to live by god's word you're going to get a good harvest hallelujah and so now samson is making some good choices number one he cries out to god number two he stands against the strength of the enemy and number three he was willing to die for what he believed he was willing to die for what he believed are you there church are you willing to die for what you believe you better be living in the day and an hour that we're living in with all this mess going on around the world I, I don't know when Christ is coming back nobody does I don't care what they say nobody knows when Jesus is coming back but there again we don't know what we're going to have to put up with or deal with until he comes, we better be willing to die for our faith. And we better be willing to stand up like Samson did when everything was coming against him. Nothing can hinder the power of God's grace when we cry out to him. Hear me, church? Nothing. I don't know where, I don't care where you are, where you've been, where you're going. Nothing can hinder the power of God's grace when we cry out to him. God gave Samson greater victory than he had ever had. If we've compromised sin, planted bad seed, made bad choices, God's grace is more than enough to give us victory. And I can guarantee you this, Samson made it to heaven. He did. He made it to heaven. How you know, preacher? Right here. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse number 32 and following. It says, And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and who? Samson. Samson had faith. The Bible says, without faith it's impossible to please God. It says, Samson and Jephthah, and also of David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Samson in his weakness became strong. Where are we at, church? I want to be strong in the power of God's might. I want to be strong in the power of God's might. I want, I want us all to realize my choices don't just affect me. They affect people around me. My choices matter. The strength of grace can overcome the seeds of compromise. The strength of God's grace can overcome the seeds of compromise, bad choices. God's grace is sufficient, folks. It is. It is. I'm just here to tell you, amen. And, and there again, I know I'm just laying out a foundation here, but the church, I, I just want you to know. This year, going forward, 
I think the reason God put this on my heart is he wants to, if you've made some bad choices, listen, come on. It's okay. I'm not saying it's okay. I'm saying it's okay. We, we, can, we can outrun, we can outlive the consequences of what I did years ago. You, you, you can outrun what you did yesterday. You can outrun what you did last week. I, what I did, what we did, I, I don't want to just, I don't want to use that pronoun of you, 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 because it's us. I just thought I'd tell you. One old preacher told me one time, he said, when you're standing up there in that pulpit and you pointing that finger at everybody in that congregation, you just remember there's three more fingers pointing back at you, brother. Amen. Amen. So I'm, I'm preaching to us. Amen. God's grace is sufficient. It really is. Amen. All right. We're going to close with that. I want to. I want us to bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, sir, as we heard your word that you have sent for us today, God, I just, I simply humble myself before you. God, I remember, God, like, like David said, my sin is always before me. God, I remember the bad choices I've made. I remember some of the things I've done. But God, I also remember the times that I have fallen on my face, stood on my feet, kneeled on my knees, all the times, God, that I have cried out to you for mercy and for grace. God, never one time have you failed me. God, just like Samson, when he cried out, you heard, and God, you delivered. And his victory in the end was greater than anything that he had ever experienced before in his life. God, I'm convinced the same is true for us today. God, if we've sinned, if, we've, if we have done things, if we have made bad choices, God, I am convinced that as we cry out to you today, God, our victory lies ahead. And it's going to be greater than anything that you've ever done in our past. God, thank you. Thank you for the assurance of faith and grace and mercy. God, that good work that you have begun, you'll bring to completion. God, as we put our faith and our hope and our trust in you through Jesus Christ, who died for our sins. He paid the price. God has been paid for. Now all I got to do is receive the gift. God, look through this congregation. God, you know the choices we've made. Good and bad. You know the choices we've made. God, for the good ones, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Looking forward to a good harvest. God, I hope we plant a lot of it. Good choices. God, if there's anybody here, and I don't know, you do. If there's anybody here that's made a bad choice, I don't know what it is, but you do. God, help them. God, show them today. Grace. Mercy. Peace. Love. is available right now. Lord, I'm sorry. Sorry for the bad choice. Sorry for the sin. I repent. God help me never to do it again. God help me never to make that choice, that bad choice again. God from this day forward help me to make good choices, good decisions. God if I need to leave the room, if I need to leave the building, if I need to leave the situation momentarily until I can pray and seek your face and get the strength to be an overcomer, God, so be it. Help me. Help me to know that there is a way of escape for every temptation, but God, also help me to overcome my weaknesses. Help me to realize that when I'm weak, when I realize my weaknesses, that I can't do it without you, God, that's when I'm strong. That's when things start, start going in the right direction because I start counting on you and quit counting on me. God, thank you. Thank you. Forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, all of God's children said amen. Amen.
If you prayed that prayer in congregation, I know folks did. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to ask our ushers if we will to come forward.